with David Zeritsky from the Bond Experience. And Joe Darlington from Being James Bond. And we are back. We are. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're unscathed. <laughs> I think we did pretty good with uh, License to Kill, right? I think so, too. I don't think we lost too many followers on that one. No, I don't think so. Whew. <laughs> Some of them have been tough. Yeah. Just to remind everybody of the theory, um, our theory, which is uh, holding pretty true <laughs> to date, is that each Bond actor's last Bond film, not their best, Maybe they're worst, I think. Mm. Um, and so we have gone, and we've done all the work for you, so you get the benefit of just <laughs> hearing about it. And that is we've watched these Bond films, and our next one is Pierce Brosnan's last one, his swan song, Die Another Day. <laughs> and Pierce is uh, joining us today, or at least his head. <laughs> Creepy as hell. <laughs> Um, if he starts to arch his eyebrow, run. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to start off with this, and, and, and I guess I'll start since uh, you did the last one, mm -hmm. but uh, Die Another Day. Um, I am of two minds with this film, and I have to take you back to when Die Another Day came out. Um, that was the time when things were really exploding in my mind with Bond. Mm. So I'd got, gone from being kind of a Star Wars collector to general movie collector to really focusing on James Bond. Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies and The World Is Not Enough just sent me over the top from a Bond lifestyle. I started buying the clothing, mm. the shoes. Um, by the time then The World Is Not Enough um, started ending, I was looking forward to the next film like nobody's business. Yeah. I mean, Die Another Day, that's when I really started to follow the production, started to see what um, gadgets and licensing and brands. You know, I was an older person. I was getting, you know, it was I mean, my 30s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I really was connected. So when I saw Die Another Day, my excitement, and you, you've, you've had this feeling before, when you're so excited for a film, nothing can make it bad. Uh -huh. So I went into Die Another Day, and I actually came out of it thinking it was an amazing movie back then. Mm -hmm. And the, the ending didn't bother me like it did everybody else. Well, I've rewatched it. Yeah. And of course it bothers me <laughs> because I've grown old yeah. and I've, I'm a little bit more sullen and, and realistic. And to me, it is really of two minds because I actually am okay with different parts of this movie. I think... The pre-title sequence and Bond being captured is kind of a dark moment. Mm. I think there's these like cheesy one-liners. I think Brosnan still looks great. Yeah. I don't I don't think he hit the Roger Moore moment of, of looking bad. Um to me, I still think, you know, people give Brosnan a hard time. Mm -hmm. I like him as Bond. And and I like him as Bond in this. I think that what happens with me, and I'll keep it general because I know we're gonna get specific, about two-thirds of the way into the movie. The movie goes south so quick. <laughs> like these yeah. potentially, you know, authentic bad guys and henchmen get campy as hell. Bond and the relationships go south. Even Brosnan from um, the way he acts and connects with the other characters. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Jinx. Your mama. Who, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know Holly Berry won an Oscar Oof. for Monster's Ball, but... It is so painful. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's a mouthful. And I could learn to like it. And, and that's just within five minutes of each other. Oh. That it's suddenly the movie starts to tumble down. Yeah. The, the word you're looking for is cringe. Yeah. There is a serious cringe that happens. Not, not, I mean, throughout the movie, there's a lot of cringy parts. But that particular scene when Bond meets Jinx, oh, boy, that is hard to watch. It hard is, Hard to right? watch, yeah. Yeah, so so bring bring me back. I mean, overall, kind of, you know, what did, what did you think of Die Another Day Revisited? Yeah, and it's funny, too, because not only are you and I similar in age, but we're also sort of similar in when our Bond fanaticism started to really take hold. That's right. And I remember, you know, again, growing up, always being into the James Bond movies. Uh, when GoldenEye came out again, it was kind of like, oh, the Bond movies are coming back. And it really started, and it was around, like you said, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, uh, The World Isn't Enough. Where, I mean, opening night, I'm there, everyone knows, don't bother me because I'm going to the opening of the new Bond movie. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really starting at this point to really get the bug. Like, like, like the, this bug, not just this bug. Right. Um, so, yeah, it comes out and I'm kind of like, I mean, again, like you said, and I think everybody sort of has this same experience. The, the, the opening is good. Uh, the the idea of Bond captured is pretty cool, and and I even gravitate towards the whole 
I mean, the capture part, the escape from, I mean, when he gets traded, mm -hmm. uh, when when they bring him back, and then he escapes from the hospital and, to, and goes to the Hong Kong hotel, yep. my usual sweet please, that's a great Bond moment. I and love I kind of feel like too. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, you, you know, I, nobody can take that away from anybody. I mean, that's a great spot. I even liked the theme song, which oddly, I mean, hmm. which is, I think, yeah, that's kind of a love it or hate it thing. And, and, and I've sort of done both. Yeah. I've had sort of a love hate relationship with the song. I uh, hated it when I first heard it. But the lyrics, the, that whole kind of like, you know, th that redemption stuff, yeah. you know, and, and, and being in, in, in a place where you're going to, I'm going to get out of this and, and, and be better and yada, yada. So I kind of, that whole thing I gravitated towards. Well, then the movie goes on. And yeah, then it, like you said, it takes a weird turn. Boy, that Halle Berry, I don't understand why anybody, why she's such a phenomenon and why people are so into her. Your mama. I think she's a terrible actress. I mean, I mean terrible. Yeah, look what um, she did to Catwoman. Yeah, oh I mean, I mean, every line she delivers. And she told me to tell you she's really disappointed in you. It's just so weird. I mean, this is, I can remember even watching this with my parents when it came out. Like, I'll see the, the film. Right. Then when it comes out on video, I'll grab it and sit my parents down and have a little kind of night with mom and dad to watch Bond. And even the part where they're in the airplane and she punches out the pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even my mother sitting there going, oh, come on, she's 90 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, not very believable. And and the idea that they, li re I thought this was an urban legend. The fact that they really considered doing a spinoff with no, that's, her? That's, I think that's a real thing. I, I know. As I, mean, I know. I was shocked. I, I, when I heard Michael Wilson actually say that in an interview that they were yeah. debating that, I was like, you have to be kidding. Yeah, I, I agree. That was wince-inducing. And, and I, I will say, just to fly back for a second, the the, the opening in the Hong Kong, uh, the, um, the hotel, everything... Even Bond getting cleaned up, yeah. I think, are wonderful Bond moments. They yes. feel really good. And I think Pierce Brosnan does that so well. I mean, the whole thing, yeah. honestly, it looks like um, it looks like a shaving commercial because it's so well done. And <laughs> it only, kind of is, but they got it. Right? And only yeah. Pierce Brosnan can do that yeah. incredibly well. And, you know, he, he smashes the mirror, and mm. so he gets a little rough and tumble. So you're like, this is really going to be good. And even the interaction with M, mm. I think, is, is well done, yeah. the holding of his breath. The... For me, the pre-title, uh, sorry, the, uh, the the opening song, I didn't like the Madonna song. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of these ones, here's my gauge. Yeah. If I'm listening to a soundtrack of Bond films, yeah. do I fast forward? Do I get to the <laughs> next one? And I do with this. I do not listen to this yeah. on purpose. But I did like the imagery. The mm. scorpions and the things happening. Yeah. I think it well done. all looked really well. Um even when he goes to Cuba, mm -hmm. so you yeah. know he's on the lamb and he goes to Cuba, and you know they start off with him, dun 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 dun, dun and the music, very cool. Yeah. Which, by the way, the music, the score was really good in this. Agreed. Again, you know, it's agreed. That David, David Arnold, Arnold is, is on his game. Yeah, he could do no wrong. Yeah, but but I will say that it is the point. I hate to look. This is not going to be thirty minutes or twenty minutes of beating up on Holly Berry. I promise. <laughs> but it does tend to go south so all the pairings and connections with yeah. her every time she's seen in the, in the ice palace and all these things just the movie drops down significantly oh yeah the, the, right the, the air is just let out of the balloon i mean when they cut back to her creeping around then she gets captured and and i mean yo mama yo mama Really? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Like they, they could not. I mean, and they were gonna do a whole spin-off with this character like i mean who's writing this this was yeah. just awful and what did you think of Gustav Graves? Him I liked. Okay. I, I did. Yeah. And I, I liked the concept. See, it's funny because when you first meet the, the Korean colonel, uh, Colonel Moon, Yeah. Um, I, again, and th there are little aspects of the film, even in the parts that are good, aren't great because they kind of feel like they sort of, eh, like, like the two guys, him and Zhao, mm -hmm. you know, again, supposed to be Koreans right from Korea, but they kind of had these... California accents to me, you know, <laughs> like they sound like they're yes. very American. Yeah. Um, but again, so I was not really impressed with them in the beginning. When when the Gustav Graves character comes up and re replaces him, I I thought the to I thought Toby Stevens did a pretty good job. You know, right. he kind of has that sneering, and he's trying to do like he says this kind of very British, um, almost a stereotypical British yeah. upper crust um, snobbery. Um, I thought that kind of worked. Now. I, I find some of the scenes 
the fencing scene. Everyone loves the fencing mm. scene. I'm lukewarm on it. Yeah. And I one of the things I find funny is that again, that's all that cringy stuff. Well, first of all, he comes in and meets Madonna. Yes. Talk, like she forced herself into there somehow. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. And then, and Serves of course, no purpose. No. Well, the only purpose is to give Bond the most cringy lines I think of, of yes. any Bond film. Yeah. I see you handle your weapon well. I have been known to keep my tip up. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, then he meets Graves, and it's like all of us. All they have to do is meet each other. And it's this sneering rivalry. Because they don't know each other. They right? don't know each other. Yeah. I don't know. I, does Bond think that he's the baddie just because the the diamonds he found were were, were of, at some point came from the Gustav Graves, mm -hmm. whatever? So, again, like it kind of goes back to Zorn and a couple of other the weaker scripts that's like, oh, uh, I found this and it has the company logo from here on it. Yeah. He must be the bad guy. So if you steal a Windows computer, you're going to go after Bill Gates because he's the bad guy. Uh, again, I don't really get it. So they have this this sneering, you know, already, and it's yes. like, what's what, like? As I watched it again last night, I was like, why is this? I don't yeah. get that. I, I he didn't work for me. I found I found him first of all. It was a little confusing, even even when I first saw this, and certainly now, how you've got kind of the facial changeover, but everything's mm. different. Like you use two wildly different actors to yes. represent the same person, right? And yeah, for not the greatest reason in the world to have a little bit of a showdown with your father at the end and go, "Look, it's really me." I mean, there wasn't that payoff, and I yeah. I found by the time he was on the plane wearing the armor. <laughs> and and literally <laughs> focal points during the whole thing was here's a giant suitcase get it smaller here's a case yeah but I can't wear it now uh, here's my thing now here's the big payoff right and it's like I'm the emperor from Return of the <laughs> Jedi seriously right are you joking <laughs> oh my god it that, just didn't work that was yeah again wildly over the top he was wearing this outfit with the glasses and everything like just I mean you you I mean, right they took something. Oddly, so here's here's my one of my, one of my meters that I have when I'm judging movies. Yeah, if if it sort of starts off one way and kind of lets you know what you're in for early on, right? And then they sort of stick with that, even if it's not great. Well, okay, but I was on board the whole time. Yeah. This one, wow, they start you off with this this gritty Bond is captured and tortured, yeah. and this is going to be like hardcore serious spy stuff. Then they get to this Looney Tunes craziness. Yeah. Well, you look. I mean, if I like the beginning part, then you've obviously lost me. Why would I? It's just so wildly I, uneven. I agree, and I've got to mention, I had a couple guilty pleasures in here. Okay, I'll admit it. Make culpa, make culpa. <laughs> um, guilty pleasure: the Aston Martin scene on the ice with the Jaguar. Okay. Um, the the flipping up and letting it turn over, yeah. and the the effects and everything like that, because it. To me, I'm comparing them directly when he starts to do the whole paragliding thing. Um, from the, the, <laughs> oh my gosh! First of all, worst special effects I think in any Bond film. Yeah, and just cringing. Just no. Uh, After such yeah. a really cool thing with the Aston Martin, I didn't get it. Uh, no, and again, I, I, I and, and, you know, again, th this director Lee Tom Hori. I mean, he had a very different vision for what Bond movies should mm -hmm. be going forward. But yeah, boy, is that painful to watch. I mean, again, it, it was funny too. You'd, you'd think like how many years later we're kind of looking back at, in retrospect, going, "Well, now it doesn't hold up so well." No, no, it was bad at the time. Yeah, exactly. Like you sat there in the theater, kind of going, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have to admit it. I think I was drunk with uh, happiness of a new Bond film or something. Oh and, yeah. And by the way, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think not only do people think in general, we can go over individuals, but that this is Pierce Brosnan's worst. I think a lot of people put this at the very bottom of all Bond movies. Oh, yeah. In many cases. I, I think so, too. Well, I, I I think it's funny. As we're sort of doing this series of all of the, the, the last slash worst Bond films, I mean... You are probably talking about very bottom of the of the rung, yeah. Um, and yeah, this one I think is easily in the bottom several. Um, it, it's I yeah, <laughs> it's inexplicable. <laughs> yeah, um, I I I. So maybe we already did say it, but for me, this is Pierce Brosnan's worst film. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you there. I, I, and I and again, I think it's oh. is worse by a pretty substantial margin. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, it's you know, and it's funny too because a lot of people will say. 
that it's the best of times, worst of times. Like, there's a lot of really great things in it, but a lot of really terrible. I think even the really great things, that's being very generous. And I think there's a lot of things in it that, you know, we we want to like. But, again, I mean, I mean, I liked some of the things I think work better on paper. Yeah. The, the Cuba scenes, the music is good, for sure. Um, some of the Cuba stuff is okay. Once they get to the clinic again, it's 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 sort of very comic booky kind of action. Strange. Um, I mean, even even the pre-titles again, a lot of people really like it, but again, it's sort of at this point it was getting to be okay. Bond, what happens? Oh, he runs and just jumps into a vehicle, and there's a vehicle chase. It's right. like like wow, it's you know. Especially after the heels of the world is not enough. Once they did the speedboat, it's like you just showed this. Yeah, right. It's it, it was getting very standard stuff, like just run into a vehicle, yeah. into a vehicle, do a vehicle chase. And, you know, make it as over the toppy as we possibly can. Um, so, again, it, it really did have potential. And I think even the worst Bond movies always do. In fact, usually the frustration is, well, there's a good movie in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, the story was fine. I mean, I kind of felt like it could have worked. And even the gene therapy DNA stuff, as kind of over the top as this is. I mean, this is, again, you're talking about DNA, like cloning, border, borderline mm -hmm. cloning. and Send in the clown! Uh. He is exactly like you in every way. Except one-eighth your size. Breathtaking. I shall call him... Mini-Me. But it could have worked. Yeah. And again, I, I, I... The Gustav Graves, again, I... I, I, you don't like him so didn't much. Didn't bother you. Didn't bother you. Didn't bother me. And I like, again, the concept of sort of having, he said, I wanted it to be an over-the-top version of you. Right. Um, okay. So, again, I'm with that. And Miranda Frost, by the way, we didn't mention, I think, is the that, actress. That's very terrific. telling that we didn't mention her. Right. Because right, cause it kind of gets under the radar. But, you know, I and again, but even like her character, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, my dress falls off. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> again, you know, I like the idea, but you, you guys have to write this better. Wait, we forgot somebody. <laughs> right. John Cleese, SQ. There you go. As R, SQ, as Yeah, R. and SQ. Well, I'll tell you, I'll let you go ahead. What do you think? Um, I didn't, well, okay. So, I mean, coming from Desmond Llewellyn to yeah. him, it's like, mm, groan. Uh -huh. um, and also... They totally play him as a buffoon, as yeah, a character. Yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't. Literally, if you just noticed, I mm. forgot him. Yeah. I had pushed him out of my mind. Yeah. I, this, I'll tell you something. My feeling on him is sort of uh, an oxymoron. I think he was the perfect replacement for Desmond Llewellyn. Okay. But he's the perfect replacement in a bad movie. Meaning, like, he he's sort of the cinematic answer to how can we possibly replace Desmond. And when they're in, when he's introduced in The World Is Not Enough, they purposely do it to where Desmond is pushing him around. Yes. Even though yeah. Cleese is the big star, yes. they purposely push him around, yep. put him in his place, so that the fans are not going not gonna to react. I mean, if Cleese comes in and overpowers right. Desmond, well, oh, no, 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 we're not having that. So they were very smart. But again, it... Even the way they play him in this, it's like, again, it's a cinematic response and a cinematic answer as opposed to something that should make sense in a realistic Bond world. So, again, good good idea to have him in there, but it sort of also shows you where these films were going, where we were more interested in, in laughs and just having fun than really yeah. doing anything resembling an actual spy story. Joe Darlington? Has spoken. <laughs> uh, it... it, it. Would you consider this Pierce Brosnan's worst film? Uh, yes, this is this is clearly Pierce oh. Brosnan's worst film. Didn't see that coming. Yeah, didn't see it coming. <laughs> you know, it's funny though. It is funny because we went from License to Kill to this one. It's amazing how we've taken such a leap forward in time in yes. just a short span. Wow. Because I know that day doesn't even feel that long ago. I know? know it doesn't. But I mean, think about the the time they had in between Brosnan and yeah. everything. And speaking of that, um, we are uh, no no easy segue. We're going to be segueing to. An interesting discussion because, you know, we can't really call this Daniel Craig's last, last Bond film because mm -hmm. he's making one right now. Yep. But we're going to say that it's his last Bond film to date. Right. As and long as we do this quickly, it's his last film. We're going to be talking about Spectre. We are. And we're going to bring it through the same ringer and filter and mm -hmm. see how it holds up. Exactly. Is, is it going to hold up? And this one should be interesting because it, it's got... It uh, will be. I think there'll be twists and turns aplenty. I, absolutely. 
This has been uh, David Zaritsky. And Joe Darlington. We'll see you real soon. See you next time. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.